Street can be hard between work and family responsibilities and spending time on our phones. Mm, those phones, that's true. Mm -hmm. Putting down that phone for even just a few minutes can really go a long way to helping all of us, including our kids. It helps them increase their reading and literacy skills. Sarah Fudge, the founder and director of Saybrook Reading, is here to tell us all about the advantages of reading and what you can do for your kids at home. Thank you so much for yeah, being thank here, you Sarah. For having me. I'm so happy to be here. I'm going to ask a hundred year old question. Do you guys remember Riff? Reading is fundamental. It was a group when I was growing up that was, sounds very similar to this. I know it was probably a Long Island thing, but whatever. But it was a great organization, and yours sounds just as equally as wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, 100 years ago, I feel like we had it right in reading. You know? <laughs> right? There were no distractions like the phones. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. And so how did you start Saybrook Reading? So I actually started Saybrook Reading in during COVID. I started on the town green in Old Saybrook, That's sitting incredible. six feet apart with masks on. Wow. And I just started getting clients after that. And I specialize in working with kids with dyslexia. So that's, oh, that's kind of great. my niche. Um, and I'm an adult with dyslexia as well. So I really can get down to their level and understand where they're coming from. Tell yeah. us a little bit about dyslexia for those of our audience who might not understand yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah, so when I get parents coming in, that, that's usually the first question they ask. And I always tell them that it's something that happens when the baby's forming in the womb. It's hereditary. Usually a parent or a grandparent has dyslexia mm. and it just passes down from generation to generation. There is a spectrum of dyslexia. You can be really, really dyslexic, or you can just be kind of more mild, like myself. Um, I'm not the best speller in the world. <laughs> um, so it's really just that. It's neurologically based in the brain, so it's not something that you can just you know, get. It's something that is just in your wiring of your brain. I love how you know you're being so candid about that. Thank you for sharing yeah. that because I think it's so important. Mm -hmm. You know, we kind of got to break the stigma too. This is a thing mm -hmm. um, that some people have, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And there are ways that you can really foster and harness, you know, um, what what some who are dyslexic, for example, need. You know, yeah. and and I, you also brought up kids in the womb. Mm -hmm. um, something that they always said when you're pregnant is read, read to your baby, yes. even your baby in the belly. Yes. Um, there's so many advantages to that, mm -hmm. and that also. Also, as our kids are getting older and outside of the womb, even just them seeing you read is so beneficial. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, so, well, language, oral language is the first thing that your baby's exposed to. They're hearing music, they're hearing us talk. So, like, when kids come out, they already are wired for our language. So when you're reading to your kids at night, they are just hearing how a story is told. They're hearing you read. They're getting exposed to higher level um, content as far as how a story is told and character development. So um, the research is there because the, we have that oral language and it just increases that literacy skills as right. they is, is there a certain amount of like an hour a day or ten, a half an hour a day or does it make a difference any amount is good yeah so I say 20 minutes a day so okay. you mentioned putting the phones down so being a good role model in the home and putting your phone down taking out the magazines and reading those newspapers and just modeling that reading for kids in the house, be, they see it every day, they're gonna wanna do the same thing. We have a quiet time on Sunday uh, nights where everybody has to have quiet time and we are reading as well. Mm. Um, and at first they didn't like that, but then after the fact they're like, well, what did you do? Like, I wrote a story, I wrote a joke. Um, so just letting them be bored. It's okay for them to be bored. Uh, Put the tablets yeah. down. Let that imagination go. That is such a good point. Kids mm -hmm. these days do not know how to be bored. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's one thing that yep. a lot of kids are missing. Yep. Like That's where you find that creativity and tap mm -hmm. into that, right? Yep. yep, yep. And then when you're in the car, my favorite thing is like building that background knowledge. So do not have the tablets in the car. Let them be bored in the car. Let them try to figure out what the signs say. Um, point out different language around you. Um, one thing that I like to do is, well, what's a synonym for hot? You know, what's an antonym for hot? What's an antonym? What's a synonym? And getting them exposed to language because it happens so quickly in school. It, it's like so fast. And you're it, helping them make that yeah. connection mm -hmm. in school, like that yeah. you're kind of marrying what they're learning in school and then at home and yeah. together. Yeah. And it doesn't make a difference what you, you say in the womb. Mm -hmm. you know, start talking to them mm -hmm. in the womb. So yes. one, two, three, just yes. keep, keep reading. Yep, yep, exactly. And there's got to be some kind of engagement even personally, right, for the adults as well, mm -hmm. tapping back into that because, you know, not everyone picks up a book and reads at mm -hmm. night yeah. or during mm -hmm. the day yep. or on lunch break, yep. you know? Yep. I pull out my old favorites, like Goodnight Moon is one of my favorite books. Oh. And also, oh. My son yeah. is in third grade and I also pull it out and read it to him at night. Yeah. Um, they have different versions of the book too, so it's fun as they get older, like comparing them, how they've changed. Um, right now we're reading Diary, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Oh, yeah. And um, 
it's just it's just a fun way to um, connect with my son at night. And I was just gonna say it's good bonding oh, I love too. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there such a thing as tip and mitten anymore? No, I don't know. Tip and mitten. Oh, those are like the old school yeah, ones. Yeah, that's, that's what I <laughs> learned. He's 100 about. years old, I'm as he mentioned. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Sarah, what kind of services do you offer at Saybrook Reading? So we have really expanded. It started with just me in a small little office building, and now there's seven of us. Wow! Oh, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So we don't really consider us ourselves tutors, we're practitioners. We have a really special reading certification that a lot of people don't have. Um, it takes a lot of time and efforts to acquire this certification. So we really are experts in the field of dyslexia. So we get a lot of referrals for that. Um, I always say we have free consultations. Come on in, I'll talk to you. We have a huge referral ring of um, educational advocates, psychologists, social workers, wow. educational lawyers, and we refer out for free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's really just about getting the right help for you. Well, there's all the information right there on saybrookreading.com. Yeah. Yeah. What a great organization. I know. Yeah, thank you. And you have a bi-monthly book club as well, yes. which people can find out more yeah. about on your website. Yes, yeah. We just, if we can read at home, then that's a way of showing that I'm reading at home. We're meeting, um, get, meeting connections with people. It's great. Thank you yeah. so much, thank Sarah. You. Continued Good success. You. Thank you. you got to come back. <laughs> uh, and here is the link to the Mommyhood Unscripted, the QR code, my podcast. A wonderful resource for any of you parents out there, but really caregivers. Uh, we do not discriminate with age. It's for everyone in every season of life. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And the latest episode is with uh, country music star Kimberly Perry. I had a chance to talk with her about motherhood and all things, so go check that out. Renee, eat pizza. <laughs>